That's my baby, he goes hard. Joseph Solomon, there you go, baby, you good. So, good morning, y'all. I'll be having to kick my little music. I'm I'm in it to win it, you hear me? So more, more so today, I always speak positivity. But welcome to the Passion Pit at 187, Cut the Fuckery Ass. I am your host. And it's been a minute. I took my headphones and my um, mic off for a minute. I'm going to get another headset and a microphone because I get a lot of static and stuff. But it's just the switchboard I need to switch over. So that's in the process. I'm cleaning the garage. It's a lot going on. I have a lot going on. But it's all good. So this morning is a recap because I don't know if anyone knew I had got blocked off of Facebook. I went to Facebook jail on this page, but I had my other pages and I was on my other pages, but more so I had kept the um, passion pick going. I was hopping on every morning last month and I was just, just you know, hammering stuff, hammering stuff, different topics, talking about all kinds of stuff. More so I was trying to motivate people around me, you know. That's the only reason why I got the, you know, the, the podcast setting. It's just a Speak me, be me, and people come gravitate towards me. But in and, and, and being me, I'm telling you the truth, you know. Uh, recently, I have been doing a little partial truths and whatnot, but I've been speaking more so about the spirit, the world, things of that nature because it's this series, you know. And I want to recap in some ways, if you give me a minute, you know, about some of the stuff I talked about. But more so, I want to recap about, you know, um, Hurrying off. some of the stuff that, uh, that's true and that has happened to me and got me where I am today so I got my handy dandy you know me it's my green baby and uh, we've been through hell you look at her she 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 been through I, I had her for about a good year and a half now that's my dog and uh we ride you know and I have to write a lot of stuff down and I get to why and I get to uh a lot um, don't let the surface fool you uh, very deep, very educated, and now I'm about to teach y'all something, and I'm y'all sister, I'm y'all friend, I'm y'all homie, I'm y'all cousin, and I want y'all to know that I love y'all, 
<laughs> I love y'all so much. I don't care. Whatever beef you got with me, it's a worldly beef. Because if you knew who I was in the spirit, it, it'd make us weep together. You feel me? Because it's beautiful. It's something that I want everybody to have, but you got to fight for it. Now, how I'm speaking it is the truth. But the way I'm speaking it, the way I'm speaking it, I'm not, I'm trying to grab people to understand the way I'm speaking it. Because obviously, certain preachers can't talk to y'all. Certain people outside can't talk to y'all. But I'm y'all. I'm close to y'all. But I have a spiritual sense. I have a spirituality. But hopefully, the way I explain the truth, you guys will be like, oh, okay. That's, you know, and you go seek it yourself. Because that's all I'm trying to do is direct you to God. Okay. I wish I would have went live yesterday because I had, ooh, I went hard. I was like, damn, I should have wrote that down. I was going hard in my head like, yeah. So, anyway. So, again, yeah. we're going to get to her. We're going to open this joke up. I got so much stuff in me. God is good. <laughs> I'm a beast when it comes to educating myself. I don't play. No, God, I'll come back and be in here read Michael Brooks. Like, and I read, bro, all of it myself. Like, bro, I love school. <laughs> I love the one I got. Ellen knows my kids gonna be smart as that. If I ever pass, and my kids find my paperwork, they gonna be some cold boys out here. Cause I wrote, I don't know, maybe secrets, <laughs> secret formulas and stuff. I don't know. All right, that's my stuff. I love writing. Okay, so the first thing I think um, I wrote about was. Um, ruminating in, 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 in truth of thought and that's where I started that's where I started everything I think that's what let me see hold on, hold on, hold on. no I actually started in abandonment okay I remember that <laughs> so I started off in abandonment and I was talking about um, the vulnerability, validation, sadness, sorrow, anxiety, disorganization, defeated, detention. I went through that whole abandonment thing because I kept talking about being in the system and being left and my connections to people and why I'm so uh, strong on people when I have a, a deep personality and stuff like that. And it, I went through that stage. So we started off with abandonment. And then we went to uh, emotional instability. So we started off with abandonment. Then we start and <laughs> we went to emotional instability. And what it what was it? Um. Uh. Oh, emotional uh, dysregulation. That's what it was. Yep. Yeah, so we did the emotional dysregulation. Oh yeah, we had a nice little journey last month. And so that was one thing. Or that was another thing. Um, mapping emotions, uh, figuring out your patterns, and that emotional dysfunction. Uh, that emotional dysfunction was, was broke down through abandonment and all of that. And, uh, and then that's when we got to... Uh, Giving and guarding spaces, self-esteem, cognitive behaviors, so your thought processes, that's what we did. And then we got into, yup, intrusive and ruminating thoughts, and that's when we came to that. So we started off with the um, cognitive behavior, the thought process. Uh, then we got to the intrusive and uh, ruminating thoughts. And then toxic behaviors and how to try and cope with toxic stuff and toxic people. Yup, that's what we did. Emotion regulation again. Okay. And now. Oh, I forgot. Okay. That was that. <laughs> okay. That was that. Oh, man. I've been educating myself. So, then I did. Uh, What was this? What was this? This was trauma, trauma. This was uh, trauma impact. And then we learned, um, that was a couple months ago though. Or was it with the uh, abandonment and trauma? 
Yeah, so we learned the different type of traumas with the abandonment, the, uh, what else did, did we learn? Um, the emotional de deregulation, we learned that with the trauma. And they had levels of trauma. Oh, that was a deep one too. Oh, I went off. So I remember that. And then trauma impacts. And then we talked about PTSD, CPTSD. We talked about um, how and where this stuff happens in our brain and what the brain does. So we talked about the amygdala, the hippocampus, the frontal cortex, the vagus nerve. Oh, the prefrontal cortex. Okay, the vagus nerve. I'm not even ripped this. Um, so, the neuroplasticity neuroplast function, yeah, that's what we, we learned about that, and then we learned about, um, orienting, um, orienting and learning and how that opens up the amygdala, the hippocampus, the frontal cortex, how 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 orienting from a child learning what other people do and signals and all of that that's why uh brain delays happen with children and stuff like that yeah and then we was talking about um how in how orienting causes different stages in our life for alarms but when we go through trauma orienting and when people abusing us or physically and mentally and emotionally and spiritually abusing us how we respond and how yet and still it retracts in our mind and records and we can ourselves make ourselves sick because of the way our body and our brain work if i'm telling my brain something my body doing it but if my brain is telling my body something that's not happening it's gonna constantly do that and it's gonna cause me to get sick and that's what we talked about orienting pt uh ptsd cptsd um uh, how people um, develop in their brain mental illnesses. How your vagus nerve and your amygdala, your hippocampus and your frontal cortex have a way of responding and transferring information. And your body has these different um, nerves that when you frustrated and the, your, 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 body, your brain sending off signals, it mess with your body functions too. Your stomach, your throat, your, you know, your spleen, your kidneys digestive system that's why when people stress they don't eat and because their nerves is connected to whatever their body telling them it's reactive you know let's talk about hypo hyposensitive and um hypersensitive how you can change from hyposensitive it's just you can switch it on and off hyper means you can't never switch it off you know it's just that and um how your brain functions and the recording and the restoration of your brain so we did that so now um i'm gonna get a little deeper because of all those things that i went over last month that was just last month <laughs> by myself though in my house you know that, that was just last month i've changed a lot um education is the shit getting from knowledge is able to bring a different type of peace on you because then can't nobody push you around you ain't got to be forcing it on people and it's like it is what it is who gonna change what what was said who gonna change what the world says but then that's when i have to break it down and oh, man i gotta oh, i gotta unblock this page because all my videos is on that page um and they dope and i i, I was in it and y'all look at me and i don't care how people look at me for real, I just care about how I teach y'all. And my, my true calling is to at least, when I'm going through something, teach y'all while I'm going. So I wouldn't have nobody being like, hey, well, damn, you wasn't telling us how you got a fear and how you got a hundred thousand, how you was getting a million dollars. You just left us hanging. You ain't do nothing for the community. So I'm leaving video. I'm leaving personality. I'm not trying to do who I am. I'm, I'm just... Up, I'm upscaling. It's time to move around. Like, you know, I got the ability to do it. I'm going to do it. And, you know, so anyway, um, I'm starting this off on my block that page. So this will be kind of crazy because I like going over, but I, I got a time limit. You know, I want myself to be on. So uh, we're going to start off with a recap of spirituality, though. And it's deep for me. And maybe it's some of these concepts that I throw out, you might have to look into deeper. But this is what I was on. Now, I don't know why my mother 
spoke certain things of me or certain things to me and my sisters and stuff when we were little. I took it it's personal because it's a spiritual thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? You got people that's out here telling people about the Bible and what it really says. So my mom raised us on the concept that Adam and Eve had sex. That Eve had sex with a satanic, demonic person. Like it wasn't a snake that gave her an apple. It was a man with a demonic spirit who lay with her and impregnated her. Now, the concept of the Garden of Eden is the peacefulness that God will give you. The world that God will give you. The fruitfulness of the uh, monogamy and all of that. The being able to hand lions meat or fruit and they eat it and they satisfy it. Like it was a concept in the mind. So my mom raised us. Raised me like that. And I always had that in my head. So let's talk about that. Um, so it was always put to me that Eve slept with a man. And became pregnant. And opened her eyes. And her husband being a, a man of. Okay let's keep continuing to work. And praise the Lord. And be. She introduced him to a sexual style of life. And he had sex with her. And if we all know. When a man has sex with a woman. When a woman finds out she pregnant her stomach's still flat you don't go see her stomach till she five and six months okay pregnant she got a then she starts showing but oh man you ain't lying like she pregnant so eve instead of eve going and being like i met somebody and he showed me something you know what i'm saying and i laid with him she went and laid with adam for a continuous amount of time and then when the lord showed or the lord came to them or the revealing came like how are you all naked you know, like, what's going on? Like, and Adam, like, you know, shit, this is what happened. Like, she and God, like, oh, no, Eve, what's going on with you? Like, what the, what's going on? Like, bro, what is that? And pregnant, and she, like, oh, you know, this is what it is. And he, like, you can't be because I, him, and he don't know, and he not ready. And, oh, you got to go. And they got kicked out. And I feel like that's exactly what happened. And Cain and Abel are um, Cain and Abel are brothers from the same mother. Um, but they don't have the same father. So, going on into the story, Cain and Abel are adults. They working. This is another man's child, and this is a woman and man's child they're raising. You know, they worship the Lord. When Cain bring his stuff, he bring his personality, his father. He have to do shit. And when Abel come, Abel come and he bring like Adam. He do shit. He bring that shit. So, Cain jealous. Of another man's blood kills him. He kill him. A jealousy like. Who the fuck is you like? You think you better than me like. And it brought on a, a vessel. In the, in the mankind. And it brought on eyes opening. Like we have introduced these. This demonic seat amongst us. So brothers kill brothers now. That's the, that's the blood. And so through man's blood. We have these curses on us. And it ain't just you. It's. Every man that's born on earth. You feel me? So listen. So all through life, we go through these things, these adverses, where God is and how God made life. And I'm going to tell you something. So let's get just right to it. Today, the womb is the most safest place. If you want to know God, it's in the womb. The, the womb of a woman is the most natural place of God ever on earth right now. And they trying to change it. They're trying to poison it. They're trying to defeat it. It's something about the woman's womb. They're trying to put it in man's body. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's something about the woman's womb that is so beautiful. You can clear your skin with it. You can. It's something about the woman, right? But it's the most safest place on earth. When the babies come out of the womb, the concept of the Lord and man is you are born in sin. Sin is death. Okay. The womb is the safest place. So when you're in the womb, a man and a woman is supposed to make a godly child. 
That's why God said, make people, meet people that's equally yoked, that have enough God in them, because you're going to put your kids in a world that don't know shit about me. But if you want your kid to live life forever and ever, make sure you and your man know who I am. Because then if your kid going to know who I am, regardless of what they want, I'm going to always guide their life, okay? And it's the truth. So equally yoked, sleeping with somebody who know God first. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. I love God. And if you a woman, fuck you, 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 you. And I love God. God will bring both y'all together and y'all will never leave each other. Because y'all love him. Y'all love him one thing at all times. The most powerful thing ever. You and this man love when y'all apart. But when y'all together, y'all love him the same. Y'all will never leave each other alone. And here on earth, y'all gonna leave each other. But in real, what the real truth about life is, right? So, boom. You, The womb is the safest place on earth. A woman's womb. Okay? A man should know that. Man is the protector of the womb. They have so many metaphoric stories in the Bible about the dragon protecting the 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 the, the, the womb. Like, oh, it's a, a double sword dragon, it's a dragon. And every time something trying to come towards the womb, it fight it. In in metaphoric terms, it's supposed to be the man's spirit. The man's spirituality, the man's love for God is supposed to check protect this child. Because the world has been given to Satan. Satan is automatic death. So when the baby come out, wah, wah, and they cut that umbilical cord, the baby born to sin. Everything that baby going to be taught has nothing to do with God. From the time that baby's born to the time that baby's able to be by himself on the lawn, nothing he taught is God. So he's dead. He lives 18 years of death. Other people's thoughts and philosophies know you got to do this. You got to wash your body like this. You got to eat like this or I'm going to treat you like this. This is what these people are going through. But if you love God and your partner loves God, you're going to teach these children under your roof the communal, co community ways of the Lord. God, the true God. You're going to teach this baby. This baby is going to fight. To get his right back. To continue to live when his body go back in the ground. When you leave the womb, your fight is to find out who God is. It's a promise because whatever you live on this earth is not what he wanted you to have anyway. If you confine to what this earth got going on, this is your life. This is it. And a lot of y'all are confined to it, but this is not the promise of God. It's been distorted. It's been threw up in the air, kicked, turned around. Men didn't help it. That's the only way the world ended up like it is. Those spirits are embodied in this creation, and we do not pay attention to that. So distracted. It's that easy. It's dope to me. Y'all like anime and avatars and uh, 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 fucking Dragon Ball Z drawings and, you know, Japanese food and shoes and clothes. That's dope. But the human life, vibrations, energies, the way our bodies, this the dopest stuff ever. But it's so scary because people don't, they, you mess up. And when they say, Satan, take your power, it's just the fact that you're just going to be another person with him. Why, why is people dying? You just another body added on. It's a lot of people that sacrificed themselves to him and allowed themselves to go with him and wanted to see that. But this is it. When you hit them crossroads and you didn't get your promise papers, that's it. This is what you accepted. And through life, people don't understand that. And you can look at me now and say what you want, but it's a different game that's being played. I play the credit game. A lot of y'all don't play that. I play a sit-down game. A lot of y'all don't play that. I play the healing game with myself. Heal yourself. Educate yourself. That's all it is. Knowledge. Putting yourself in order. That's it. It's just a disorganized, fucked up situation. All you gotta do is start putting pieces together. Okay, let me take this out. Let me organize this. Okay, let me put that to the side. This is clean over here. Okay, let me organize. That's how you gotta do your life. Because if you don't do it and you ask God to do it, he gonna do it. Go tear you up. So that's what we getting into. But again, we stuck, distracted. 
I'm saying we because I'm y'all. I learned there's no forgiveness for sin. It's the blood. You gotta sacrifice yourself. There ain't no, you gonna keep doing it. Ain't no way it's gonna stop. You can stop all you want to, but I swear to God, if you go outside, it's 10,000 motherfuckers doing it dead in your face. It's never gonna stop. There's no real way to forgive sin. Right? How it's up to you to stop. I would like it if you stop, but like for real though. I'm gonna be me. Whatever I can, whatever them 18 years did to me, God says I forgive you for that. That's my slipping and slip out. That's the stuff I have to continue to work on. But it's just a it's a, just a little basket of stuff. <laughs> like literally, I don't got too much. I don't do weird shit. Like I am very simple. My little bullshit of sins is this big. You'll be like, what? I'm simple as fuck. And a lot of people are thankful for that. A lot of people got big baskets of bullshit. Whoa, bro. Like, your sins is a lot. Maybe you need to go. You and God need to go chopping. And that's another, that's what we getting into. So, the fight on earth is to get your birthrights back. Fight on earth is to get your birthrights back. And the only way that is, is to learn who God is. The only way to do that. It's to learn who God is. When you learn who God is, it's another step. And the step is so dope, but it'll take everything away. And it's hurtful because it's a process. Because a lot of us are doing a Jonah move. And we running from God. And I have my time to share. My shares in times that I run from God. But I talk to God more and deal with God more every day more now than I ever did in my whole life. Than I ever did every day. I like where I am. I live in the present. I don't have crazy thoughts, nothing going through my head. I'm not worried. I ain't worried about bills paying. Sometimes I do, but it ain't like it's hurtful. Like something must become somebody gonna take something from me. Something gonna happen. Like I'm not worried like that. That's crazy, but it's true. All from developing a true understanding of what life really is, how life really is, what's the distraction, what the world got to offer, what this really is. It's, com it's complex because the reason why they make it so complex and confusing is because you will stop. What the fuck? For real. It's so to you everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. The phones, the laptop, shopping, credit, working. You will be so into this, you do not pay attention <laughs> to this stuff. Everything was. <laughs> This motherfucker doing this. And things are happening and it hurt my heart because that's the magic way to do shit, right? Africa never. That's the move. But everybody moving fast and it's like, bro, back up. God, don't. When you learn who God is, you stop fucking with the world. And that's another thing, too. Christianity, people pull from that. I ain't no Christian, bro. I just live. I love God enough to stop shit. You hear me? I do. And that, when you learn who he is, it ain't about, okay, I got to eat this much. I got to do this much. I got to do this much. It ain't about that. He don't want you to be fake. He don't want you to be out here doing this, this, and the third. He don't want you. But you keep your eyes on him. I was just telling myself yesterday, I should have went live and said something about it. Will you get into it with somebody? Don't curse them back. Send them to God. Send them to God verbally and your feelings, everything. Make them want to see God in your heart. Be mad in your head. Imagine them looking at God and telling them all that bull crap you went through with them. Promise you. Talk to them like that. Put them back in front of God. Don't send them back to the streets. Oh, you motherfucker. Oh, you don't talk shit, you dumb bitch. That's why you're dirty, you stank, and your mama don't love you, you ugly ass. Mom. That's sending them back to the streets. That's sending them back to the streets. Your kids, you don't take care of your motherfucking kids. That's sending them back to the street. Sending them to God. Hey, bro, you need to go see. You need to pray. Your mind needs to be put in or, or organization. You need to be able to get up, get go pay a note, send them to God. Uh, you need uh, money in the bank. You need clothes on your back. Send them to God. Don't curse them. God gonna stay on their ass. Send them to God. Stop getting on people and hurting them, sending them to the streets is another thing. They never get to where they're going. Bless them.
send him to God. Mother cuss you out, send him to God. Well, I hope God bless you. And I hope you pay attention to this because if we would say, what if God was sitting at the table with us? Would you say it like that? And a lot of people are like, nope, I wouldn't say it like that. Don't say it like you, bitch. And you go, you be like, okay, well, God is sitting at my table and he paying attention to how you speaking to his child because I ain't did nothing to you. Send him to God. Don't no, send him outside because it's a curse on you. It's a three-way curse. You learn how God communicates, you're going to shut up and start sending people straight to him. Like, bro, I ain't got time for you because better go talk to God. Because he's sitting right here. He witnessing this with me. And I'll walk away from you because if I bear witness, I'm going to go against you because I don't like it. And you go against God's child, you know them punishments be ass whooping. So go learn who he is. And you're going to start worshiping. I'm like, oh, man, you're going to automatically stop doing stuff. So Christian restrictions, like that's not life. You're not living, bro. You're not living if you can't be free. But we're going to get into this. So, give me this 10. Uh, got into frustration. Frustration is deep. Um, frustration comes from triggers. Like, irritation, agitation. My fr Let me give you an example. Like, frustration for me is like this. Something I can't solve. Problems that irritate me, agitate me. Probably I tried to do something about like my my babies. Okay, kids eat when they want to eat. That's one thing I learned. But the more you time they eating and feed them at a time, you know, you will know like okay, it's almost time for them to eat. Let me get them prep. So sometimes the kids don't be able to eat on my prep times, so I'll be upset. But it frustrates me. So I look into my frustration. Why are you upset, Diamond? I'm frustrated. I'm agitated. I'm irritated. I'm I'm kind of mad. Like why? Cause I set up a time for my babies to eat. When I set up the time for them to eat, I set my time around that. So if you don't eat, that means that when all I'm doing my stuff, like make take me 30 minutes to just do it straight, get it done over. You're gonna stop me while I'm doing my stuff, and I'm gonna be upset. You go take my time up, and you go make me stop doing what I'm doing, and I'm gonna, I'm frustrated now. So I look into my frustration, okay, and it's a belief. It's something that I did for the what I want for me. So when I dig deeper than that, I get more frustrated because that's not cool. So now I'm, I'm uh, righteously upset, but it's two levels of upset. I still have to solve this problem. So now what I've been doing for six months Getting myself prepared for six months, I have to get out of because today my kids just didn't want to eat at this time. And I can't make them. Now I'm mad because for six months straight, they've been doing this program. They've they been on this. But just today, they just wanted to not do it. And I, I did not understand that. What? You go, my uh uh. That's not how it goes, but that is. And being confined to structure. Will cause frustration so you learn God okay and and a lot of people be thinking that uh, learning God is free and you won't have no structure that's the most beautiful structure because when you ask for help spiritually that means your hands are you ain't got to do nothing watch and keep asking and keep believing it and you know you getting help you know so Frustration is what's inside of you. You know, it's um, a barrier between um, I want to help, I want to help, but I can't. I can't help. You know what I'm saying? It's stopping me from doing something. It's, 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 it's something that is putting a line or something between something I know I can figure out or I know I can take care of or should have been taken care of or when I said when I wanted to do it, it should have been done. Like, Frustration is on you. Total belief. I used to never get frustrated because I never had any, like, <laughs> I never had no beliefs. I never had, like, no, I always was open. Whatever fucking happens after that, I used to be like that. But I, it was godliness. It, it had nothing to do with, I didn't have no, like, my life was good. Like, okay, I worked and, I don't know, I just, 
I never really, I never got frustrated. I could fight them. Now I would love, now that's a different type of energy though. And see, so let me do it how I wrote it. Y'all know I ain't got no back teeth. <laughs> Bitch ain't got no back teeth. <laughs> look. Okay, look. Frustration. Modification of life. Whole purpose is to believe in God. You gotta look at God for everything. Equally. Mm -mm. You and him. You can't blame nobody else. That's the true power of frustration. You can't blame nobody else. It's unexpected things. It's uncontrollable circumstances. Unchangeable circumstances. A lot of us get ourselves into that. A lot of us be in that. But real talk. Um, that's just what life gives you. That, that stuff around you, you got to remember, we are surrounded by trillions of people with their own minds and their own ideas. And man, he's a hell of a creature, okay? So, um, there's no time limit to inflicting things in life. So, unexpected things, uncontrollable circumstances, unchangeable things, there's no time limit. You, when you go through stuff and you ain't do it, or other people did it to you, or you may have did something, we really don't be knowing like when people go get sentenced for jail and shit, they don't even know how much time they're going to get and stuff. But there's no time limit to the things that are inflicted in your life. Even when there's evidence that there is things that are inflicted in your life, um, things can be hard. If you Even if you knew, you know what I'm saying, time limits and stuff that'll be hard. Um, they refer to Philippians when Paul was talking to the church and he was saying that, um, He's been up here. He's been down here. He knows God. You know what I'm saying? He's been content with God and humble with God on both levels. And so he's coming to teach them how to be um, humble and act, be of one way through life around them. Their consciousness. You feel me? Because you got your subconscious. Your consciousness is the thing around you. Um, they refer to Isaiah 14, 27. God's planning is for you. He has a plan for you. Only set out for you. So when he made the body of the man, he had a plan set out for you. Your bloodline, things that happened in your ancestry line, is something out for you, specifically for you. And that's what Isaiah was saying. And he was basically saying, who could do better than God? Who can who can mess up God's plan? You know what I'm saying? So seeking God for everything is basically your whole bodily form. You are a worshiper of the Lord. You are here to worship the Lord. Okay? Uh you got to really relate to who God is. That's the transformation of time or what we need to do. You know what I'm saying? We got to relate to who God is to get out of frustration, really. Not what other people say. You can't listen to what people say. Uh, frustration is a feeling of hindrance, a barrier between things, uh, the feeling of holding back. I always call it an internal pool, like something inside of you pulling. You can't do nothing. It's like a as it, like you like what is going on something is happening i don't know like it's inside of you that is god that is god calling you and it's a different feeling than anything in the world you can't smoke it off you can't drink it off you can't sex it off you can't go nowhere and get this feeling off it's god so it's it's two type of frustrations the worldly frustration or an exhausting frustration something that is continuous you can't you can't control it and it's death the frustration and it is exciting frustration it's an uplifting joyful frustration or frustration that keep you roused frustration to protect your body like these type of spirits you know up and down up and down like you know um so when you contented in uh, um circumstances so when you content in certain cir circumstances when they up here and down here and you can go like this and you have a sense of the Lord in you. Um, but frustration, a lot of people don't understand about frustration is it's in you. Can't no one make you frustrated. Okay? It isn't an external thing. 
it's an internal thing. The roots are from inside, from the, see, I'm trying to tell you, it's from the mind. That, 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 uh, what I call it, um, what do they call it? Uh, where's my paper at? Orienting. That's what they call it. So from a young age, orienting, when people show you things, so it's orientation, basically. Like introducing, that's what it is, orienting. Orientation is basically what they call it. It's when you're young and you register in movements and people and reactions and responses. You know what I'm saying? Frustrations come out of how you get taught orienting. And uh, it comes within you. Well, uh, I know when somebody flick at my ear, that, 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 that isn't a good thing. It make me upset. That's a frustrating feeling to have somebody fuck with my ear like this, whatever, whatever. So it's inside. So years down the road, from orienting and learning that from a young age, that this is irritating. No, no, no. When you get older, somebody can come and brush your ear. Frustrated. Like, what the fuck is you doing? Annoyed. Like, what is going on? They ain't got nothing to do with everybody around you. It's something that's inside you. So you can never make an excuse when somebody say, I'm frustrated. You blame your frustration on somebody that's a sin. <laughs> Total sin. And so that's why you got to get your mind right. You can't blame nobody. And it's a God written, it's, it's ordained, like it's in the Bible. This is the truth. Like, you can't blame nobody for frustration, for misunderstanding and ignorance put together. Woo! You can't blame nobody for that. So, uh, frustration comes from triggers. Shit like that. Smells and ways people act in certain situations. Oh shit, you get frustrated, you know? <laughs> this mom, oh, he about to take the money right off. Oh god damn it, I knew it was gonna happen, you know? So frustration comes from triggers, things that are already inside of you. Um, and more so, we was talking about how frustration can cause physical sickness. And that is, um, It's the inner sense of uh, this fast, this dissatisfaction of, of yourself. So it's the inability to accept yourself as God has made you. So levels of frustration, and the simplest way to put it, like I said, there's two ways of frustration. There's self-frustration and worldly frustration, and then you got the godly frustration. But God, we get into God frustrating you, so we'll just get into what just we on the surface of frustration. Um, frustration can cause people to think other people are uh, mentally ill too. Levels of frustration. So you got levels of frustration where people can be going through life and they just like, you know what, this is something I'm going through, man. It's just, oh, fuck it. And they can go and do their life. You got some people that you can you can deal with them, but you like, okay, on these days, this motherfucker, or these times in the month, you can't deal with these people, you know, and they can manage some some ways, but they hard to be around. But then you got people that you just can't deal with when they frustrated. Like, they're just wired. Like, what the fuck? Like, it's just some type of people. And it's levels of self-understanding, okay? Levels of uh, uh, perception. Just all these things that's within them that cause these levels. And the inability to accept yourself as God made you comes from orienting. Um... What you, what, what traumas and stuff that you have, your uh, communication to your brain to make this, this stigma that allows your amygdala and your hippocampus to communicate and your hippocampus go holler at your frontal cortex, but your brain is registering to your vagus nerve, all these things. So you have two communication systems in your body, okay, that's giving you these flashbacks and these pictures and these feelings and these emotions mind you a lot of us are dealing with uh emotional dysfunctional uh disorders you know what i'm saying so we we don't know how to uh guide our emotions you know so frustration i don't look like i'm supposed to or i let these niggas do something to me look at my face or you know what i'm saying look at my skin i should be washing my face it should be different um the inability to accept that hey God made bodies, bones to break, skin to live on this meat. You know what I'm saying? I know I better eat right, do this, do that, nigga. I will work, get my face fixed, whatever. It's the ability to accept to get over certain stuff. But when you in accepting the things, 
It can make you physically sick. Again, inter it's an um, inter sense of dissatisfaction of yourself. Um, states of frustration not being made in certain ways. Okay? These states of frustration, you, you feel they have levels. You got to stack them up. You feel what I'm saying? I'm frustrated because this, 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 and this. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it's level to it. It's complicated, but it's like, okay, I get it. Life will fuck you up. Um, uh, you lucked it to deal with things in the past. When you don't deal with things in the past and you start living with shit, it gives you reason to blame. When you find people that's always blaming people for shit, they don't want to go back and reiterate shit. They don't want to go back and learn shit that they miss because there's something missing. If you blaming somebody, blame is, is, is a hard thing to do. Like, I'm blaming you. People blame, blame. I feel like blame is the word to say. I think blaming worse than accusing. Like, I, I feel blame is wrong for the other person. That's why it's called blame. I'm blaming him. I, I, I can't explain. I think blame is bad. That's a bad way to put that. I witnessed that you did something wrong to me. You know, the blaming is I, I, I feel this way because of what you did to me. Like, that is like wrong. Blame. That just sounds wrong. So, um, living with stuff that happened in your life gives you reason to blame people like stuff that happened okay i blaming him because um i act like this because of what they did and shit like that reluctant to deal with things that happened in the past that that means that you're choosing not to that's reluctant reluctant mean i realize that this is going on but i do not want nothing to do with it and i'm just gonna move on but you blame it like you why is you bringing this shit if you say you straight go back and rehash this shit you know what i'm saying um, facing up to your past that's what I do all the time especially when I hop on a passion pit I talk about shit that happened because I feel ways you know you got emotional connection to these words when you look at talking about shit it's a juicy show <laughs> and bringing up stuff you get to rethink it now that you got a little bit more education and that's all the experience do sometimes you gotta leave your past alone so you can go get more knowledge on certain stuff and I'm not even backtrack you ready. I'm ready to listen. I know better. I know how to organize stuff now. So now I'm ready to put their words in order. Maybe they didn't mean to say that like that, but they never was educated like me. So let me have understanding. Let me go back. Sometimes you have to leave stuff in the past. But sometimes when you leave stuff in the past, what we're going to talk about next is really what you need to not do. So um, whatever made an impression on you, you gotta go back and deal with it. I'm refusal to deal with what you know is not the will of God in the present time. A lot of us deal with stuff like that. We be wanting to change. We know we gotta change. But we look at our situation and our hearts drop because it's like, damn, I'm sending it all in my face. I got people sitting around me. They ain't supposed to sitting around me. Motherfuckers all in the house. You know, I know this is wrong, but I'm not gonna say, hey, y'all gotta find somewhere to go and, because I don't wanna be lonely and I'm not gonna put these people out in. Refusal to deal with what you know is wrong and ungodly at that time will waste time. You feel me? You will miss God's true blessing. And that's how real and, simple and fast and simple it is. Soon as you put a motherfucker out, you could have went to the store and got a scratch off and won a million motherfucking dollars. You'd be like, what? It's just random. It's like that. And the refusal to choose God right when stuff happens, it causes other frustrations. Because right when those things and you feel that, you like, wait a minute. When you feel those things and you do not act on him, you do not know what he's about to do. So a lot of people would be do stuff like that and be like, I should have never put them people out. I should have never. And then three or four later, uh, back taxes came. But all the people that was leeching and using, you you put them motherfuckers out. As soon as God gave you the spirit to put them motherfuckers out, you put the bitches out. Uh -uh, everybody got to go, uh-uh. As soon as that motherfucker, 12,000 came. You put money in the bank, ain't nobody around a bank. You got bread, you what? And you got a new set of friends that give you shit. Now you can do for people, they do back. Hey, get your bread up. But the refusal, right? Um, 
dealing with frustration in people. You feel me? Uh, bitterness, hostility, anger, pointing the finger, uh, uh, stealing, lying to you. You might be a person that ain't never dealt with frustration before in certain ways, like getting fed. So now you become defensive, you know? You want to prove other people wrong all the time. That's how I became, you know what I'm saying? You want to fight for your position. I know what the fuck I did and I know who I am and look at my credit and look at this. And that's what dealing with frustrated people will do to people who aren't that frustrated or aren't frustrated. You'll, you'll start building these walls from people who are devastated by their situation. And I just read a post on Facebook, a homie said, sometimes you got to leave people alone because life fucking them up. Because they thought they knew, they don't know shit and still refuse to learn, right? So that's where frustration comes from. Not wanting to go to God, right? When he tell you, drop it, you move around. You, and, and, and you still want to play and play, okay? All that, what he had, that 10 minutes, 20 minutes, that month that was going to take you to get that million, he took it from you. Next try, now you fucked up. Now you about to be sitting around depressed again doing your weird shit, right? So that's another thing too. Nothing man creates can 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 escape from frustration. Nothing man creates can escape from frustration. Frustration is a misunderstanding of life and itself within you, bro. No, it's not outside. It's inside of you. The way your brain set up, the way you organize your philosophies, which was raised on your your like I said, your um orienting when, from you when you were shorty, your trauma orienting when people fucked with you and did shit to you. You have to go in. Erase, replace. For real. Happy, happy, happy. When motherfuckers like, do positive, do positive. It's, that's the only way. Okay? You don't know positive, though. So you got to go to God. Sometimes God be making you feel like this to call you to him. Okay? Sometimes God frustrates you and ain't nobody did shit. You just feel weird. Why am I feeling like this? You need to go pray. Motherfuckers say that you get all weird. Because you don't know who you're about to pray to. You don't really know who God is. So when the motherfuckers, they go pray, you like... Then they didn't mean to do it. You talking about the almighty change in the day. You got an Eve and a motherfucker fucked up on your chest tomorrow. You pray to God two days later. This motherfucker done corrected this shit without nobody saying nothing. That's the God you pray to. You pray to the God where, oh, man, you waiting for a check. You done forgot about it, but you in the hard need. You praying to God, but you doing what you supposed to do. Next thing you know, this motherfucker done dropped in your bank account. You been waiting for this bitch for seven months. You forgot. But you did something through God. That was an action you took through God too. But it took time. Slow down. So people, people are frustrated because of their own stuff. People running from themselves. Running from themselves. You know, don't be Jonah, you know. People get prescriptions, go to doctors, go to these motherfucking psychologists and shit that can write prescriptions. Them is the real drug dealer, bro. They suppress that shit. I'm grown. I shouldn't be talking about the shit. I already been there. I already took the medicines and shit. I've been there. Why am I going back and rehashing what my life was? Or rehashing what happened? Or how things set up? Why my brain like it is? If they that medicine would have did something. It don't do shit but stop you from thinking, bro. Your thoughts, is that's not how your brain is. You're not supposed to stop your thoughts. So they make something to cut your thinking and block certain parts of your brain so you won't remember, but things are still happening. Your body still is a recorder. You might not have remembered it, but your body did that shit. So now when you come from the medicines, you get these other shits in your head like, what the fuck? Because that's what they blocked off for the two or five years, seven years that you was taking them drugs. Because now you got to relearn this shit instead of helping you organize your brain. Nothing man creates runs from frustration. You have to organize your fucking brain. You become addicted to drugs. Because whatever was wrong with you originally is all up here. Everything is in your spirit. Your brain is your spirit. There is no way to forgive. It's like I just said, there's no way to forgive. Forgiveness is imaginary. It's got everything to do with the blood. You know what I'm saying? Just because I tried something don't mean I am that. Just because I do something don't mean I am that. And that is so hard. A man has to show himself. I, that's not who I am. This is not what I do. Uh, moments of irritation. Moments of frustration, irritation, annoyed, nerve wracking. Different different things for him. Um, 
is t periods of frustration. Now, this is where God is coming into people's lives. It's periods of frustration where um, it has nothing to do with sin or mistake. You didn't do anything. Um, you don't feel driven to prove anything. Like, you ain't got nothing to prove. You ain't got to prove that you can pay bills or talk to motherfuckers in certain situations. Nice. You ain't got to do shit. You know, you, you ain't got nobody to blame. Um, instant frustration. That's what it is. It, uh, it builds over time. You can't identify it. It's like these random alarms that go off in your body. You you feel me? You're like, man, something going on and don't nothing be going on. Just be feeling all oh, fucked up inside. Um, that's what you call God's frustration. It's the purpose to get your attention. The purpose is to get your attention for your life. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes... God wants us to see and change things and us to continue our journey and to never be nothing we ever thought about or thought or had on our mind or uh, considered. Like, why would this happen to me? Why is this coming up in my life? Our past is important to deal with. And in order to move on and be of a godly nature, God needs to change certain characters and things within you and for you. And to you in order to be certain people. So you can ask to be rich all you want to. You're not going to be rich this way. You're not going to be rich as you are because you're not rich now. So God has a way of getting you to pay attention. So you can become these things. You don't need no help. And I mean that. Books, all that he will guide you. You better pay attention. But when he comes, you got to know it's him, right? You can't blame it on your baby mama. You can't blame it on your kids. You can't blame it on somebody else. You can't go start having sex with people because you think it's your sex life. You can't uh, be going and take money out the savings account because you think it's about not having enough clothes and shit. You feel me? I'm, I went through the same shit. It's a deep ache within you. Can't nobody fuck with you. You go drink. You can go have sex. You can go party. See girls naked asses. See different pussies. It's something in you. Men convert to cheating when they feel this way. And that's crazy that I'm talking like this because they do. It's a restlessness. No one around you is doing it. You feel like it is the stuff around you. You going to find where it's at. And everywhere you go, you sit in more. You build in more habits. You build in more relationships that you don't need. And it's frustration from God. All God is telling you to sit down and pray somewhere. But you don't know. So you're not praying, man, bro, come on, let's go see some bitches. Maybe it's my girl. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the kids. Maybe I need to go visit my other baby mom. Maybe you going to start sinning, man. That's what men do, though. But instead of sitting down and communicating to God, praying, knowing that it's him, building these restlessnesses with him. And they come periodically. Sometimes you get over it. They go away. It's him calling. Like, come on, man. Get over here. What are you doing? You need to change. Resolving past situation things within you, things that you never thought were an issue. Bringing us to fullness. God agitate us so we could shake our core. Sometimes we get agitated. We act in certain ways. And when we act, we might notice something about it. Like, bro, I did not like the way I said that. Oh, oh, oh I didn't mean that. It's certain stuff God do to shake us. To get us to be like, okay, I did ask for this 10 years ago. This is something I said I want to be rich. But this is something that comes with the territory of being rich. Some people miss it. You got to be prepared for them signs. Because it, 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 it'll fuck you up if you don't know. If you don't know that's him, you going to fuck up a lot of shit for you. It's a purifying process. So a lot of us go through those experiences to hold on to the main moral lesson. And while we're going through life, we always got to remember we got a lesson in our hand. We got a lesson in our hand. So every time we go through something, we got to take the lessons. Take the lessons because God going to show out on us. He going to, what, 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 what card you got? What's your card? Nah, 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 nah. And he going to, now you got to dig in your bucket. Nah, 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 nah. You got to be prepared because God is fullness. He's going to make sure you straight. He's going to make sure what you say is the desire of your heart. If you fight for that, he's going to push it in you. You got to know it's him though. Stop ignoring and acting saying if you want him and ignoring the fact that he's, he's putting this in your life. Okay? So change, change the course of your life and you have to change the way you think about him. You can't think about God as this punishing person if you want this God to move you on top of the mountain. He's going to put you in a place you ain't never been in your life. Look where I am today. I was just somewhere else. This is not where I was supposed to be. But the desires of my heart and what I was doing caused God to look up on me and say, this is what I'm going to introduce you to. This is what I'm going to give to you. 
So changing the way you think about God, and He gonna change. He's changing the course of your life. You feel me? He go. You gonna change the way you think about him. Change the way you think about him. Um. God. He's dope. Yeah, he intervene, interrogate. Yeah, bring pressure to you. That's what God'll do. And you'll be going through so much stuff and nothing is really happening. You just don't know. You you will tear down what you already got built up if you don't handle your frustrations and calling of God properly. The way God frustrates you, some people fuck up everything they got going on instead of just sitting down. He is going to intervene in your shit. You're going to be making plans. You ain't going to be able to get them success. Why? I got all these. I'm doing all these. Call them. See what he wants. A lot of people, you are, you're connected to a spirit that you don't know. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know, definitely blocking their own blessing. You, 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 you pushing this spirit off. This is, this is, this is Jonah. God intervene, interjects, he's pushing you, getting you together, putting pressure on you so he can change you. Pressure makes diamonds. He get, you want a big old bag of diamonds from all this pressure, but if you run, you're going to miss God best. The way God start, you know, he start with the surface stuff. Hey, God, you know what I'm saying? Please, and give me the strength to change myself. It's levels to it, you know what I'm saying? Give me the strength to change myself. Give me the ability to do what I have to do so I can become a better person. He going to start with the surface stuff. He gonna start with the surface stuff, the way you treat yourself, the way you eat, your comprehension, um, the way you dress, the way you present yourself, the way you talk. He gonna start with those things. Um, you have the right to anticipate now. When you get God to come to you, it's like that person that you always wanted to text and talk to, that's really feeling you and you really feeling them. When you get a connection to God like that. Baby, can't nobody stop it. It's, 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 it's unstoppable. So, you have God in your life. You open up to him. His desire is to know you and be with you and love your kids, your dog, your job, your car, your uh, way you eat, the way you do your hair, the way you dress. He is wants to be involved with all of that. He is that person. Well, we want relationships in our persons and our spouses. That's the relationship you want with God. You want God to manifest in your sex sex life with your husband. You know, you want to manifest in your personal life and your uh, life with your kids so you can properly cultivate them, you know, and he want to be a part of that. Uh, God will bring light to you. He'll bring light to your life. Uh, God will change you. These pressures is to move you from wherever you at. You feel me? Pressure ain't always to keep you down. Sometimes pressure will make you pop and sometimes you bounce somewhere else. You feel what I'm saying? So God is into changing your attitude, your understanding, where you live, how you dress, how you talk. When you ask for specific tasks from God to do, when you frustrated, your situation was what it was. Now you're getting frustrated at something you used to be comfortable in. It's a problem. Nobody else is uncomfortable but you, but y'all all was comfortable at one point. This how God get you. Nigga, you was just chilling a month ago. And that's what people say around you. You were just chilling. You was just chilling. You was over here. Whoa, whoa. You like, nah, bro, I, don't feel, I ain't feeling this shit no more. This weird, but you was comfortable. That pressure and that change, God, about to move. This weird, why I feel like this. Don't drink on it. Don't sleep on it. Don't put your kids in it. Go ask. That's God. If you don't have no, if the world can't give you no answer, and that's what I tell people all the time. When God comes kicking your ass and it's frustration. I got my ass kicked. I have to go to him. I yearn him. I have to go in a dark closet, get on my knees, and really communicate to him. I have to pray to him. I have to get it all out of me. So God is in a moving process. That pressure is to move. You know, that chunning feeling like you can't get your hands on it. What am I doing? Why? Why don't I understand what's going on? That is. A part of the human nature. That is a way. The wandering stage. 
you know, 40, 40 days, 40 nights, wandering in the wilderness. That's what it is. That's what it is with this man. Um, prayer is the only way to find out. Or prayer is the only way to communicate to God. That's the only way to talk to God. You can't talk to God. I got on and that ain't prayer, bro. Same here, you too. Talk in peace. That's, why you, that's the only way. Satan comes through man. We Satan is, is, is an activity. It's not a person. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll just put it like that. Satan is an activity, not a person. So when you these active spirits are in people, when you say thank you, God, whatever, they hear it. Those energies hear it. That's why you don't ain't supposed to speak it out loud. They say the things that you want to do, you go and do them quietly. And that's the concept of it. God can hear you. Because you can hear yourself quietly. If you can hear yourself talking in your head, can't nobody else hear you. God can hear you. That's how he made you. That's your spot to kick it. In your spirit. That's your spot. With him. So if you think you going to talk to God outside, okay, let's see how many blessings you get. You have to have your own community. Just like you go in the house and talk to your mama about your report card. You don't go in front of your friend and your teacher. Okay, mom. Let's talk about me peeing in the bed. You don't do that. That part. You don't do that. So why would you do that with God? That part. Praying is the only way to communicate to God. Uh, don't cloud your mind with worldly activities. And that's another thing I stopped doing. A lot of people think that going to have fun and being live and always is the key. It's not. God communicates at times. When you live in the world of God, you work with God. And that's why people feel like life is, oh, it's boring, whatever. No, let me tell you something. Timing. How long does it take to spend $20,000 when you have things to do with $20,000? How long does it take to go and have fun and meet millions of people when you look good and you got bread and shit? Don't take no time at all. But it takes hella time to get it. Why think about the wasting of, of time that you're going to have to work 30 years to get again? When you can't appreciate the 30 years of working. So when you waste that time, it's not time wasted. It's the time of your life. Crowding your mind with worldly activities at a wrong time will miss your blessings from God. You think because you work or you can go on vacation, you can go on vacation. Pray to God. Because God may make you go on a vacation in three years where you can go to five different countries. But you have to wait three years. But that... Year you waited, you went to one place, wasted your money, somebody stole your stuff, somebody. So when you work for God, he worked with you. So stop crowding your mind with worldly activities. Start praying to God. Oh, I do. I pray a lot. God, show me move. And I wait. I have time. I don't. I do regular stuff that's going to feed us, keep our house clean, keep us together, you know, make us look nice. But I stay in the realm of God. I don't exert to alcohols. And I smoke my little weed and stuff, but it's not like I'm not attentive. Like, I don't know that I'm waiting on God. Like, I know I'm waiting on God. What's the will for our life is all that you're going to have to pay attention to. That's the bind. That's the reason why you're always going to be frustrated. Because regardless of what you do, it's a plan made for you. You have to come out of the womb trying to find that plan. That's it. I keep telling you, go get your papers. Because when you close your eyes, that paper is a spiritual writing off that your eyes will stay open forever. That the spiritual realm of you. You're not done after you die. And that's what you come out the womb to do. So that is God's promise for you. You have a plan for your life. Find out what it is. Go find out what it is. And if you don't find out what it is, your body and your energy and your spirit are going to have a time period where you're going to go try to fight to find it. And you, as a worldly person, don't know that. So your body is always going to go through these tensions and these motions and you ain't going to know what that is. But your body is telling you, you got to go figure out what's right, right with you because that's what you made for. That's what you made for. And people going to drink and, you know, I'm going through that time in my life where I'm just feeling down and I don't know. And I'm just, you know, I'm going to turn up and party and kill yourself. You're okay with life, but God wants you to be great at life. If it's a divine frustration and it keep bothering you, keep coming back to you, you better listen to it. You better listen to it. You're going to be on your deathbed like, I wish I would have followed my heart. Because it's in you. God will wrestle you up, wrestle up your nest for you to come to him. He will make you so frustrated 
that you just don't know. You don't go to pastors, go to preachers. It is you. Go dig deep in you. Find out what's going on with you, why you blocked, why you messed up, why your brain ain't right, why you frustrated, why people get on your nerves, why you let other people get on your nerves, why, you know what I'm saying? You got to do that. Because when you do it and you find out the truth about God and you find out how much God loves you, it's going to go from sacrifice, frustration, to straight joy. You ain't going to give a fuck when no man thinks. I'm trying to tell you. You ain't listening. I had to get to it. I'm like that. I don't care. Look, everything happened for a reason. God bless you. Ooh, that's for real. And you be stirring as hell. Like, hey, you know, find out what God really wants you to do. Hey, sorry, bro. I ain't even mean to do that to you. I hope you get over it through life because then you see the bigger picture. God is that powerful. Like, I don't need man. You don't need man for nothing. When you figure out your frustration, you figure out your organization and your communication plan and how God wants you to talk to him and how God go, because everything going to be irrelevant. Know that there's going to be problems. Sin is unforgivable. It's in your blood. If you cut out to seek God, if you cut out to pray to God, if you cut out, sin don't matter. You're here on earth. It's going to keep happening. But if it didn't exist and I put your spirit out there where it didn't, how would you function? The process is always going to be prolonged. A, pro a prolonged process is going to give you the most excitement when it hits you out the blue. Why? Why? Because of the listening, the waiting, the stalking, the sanding, the frustration, the anxiety attacks, the pity party. That's what you went through. The process, that prolonged process of waiting on God. You was listening, waiting, sulking. You could do it. Sanding, frustrated. You were having anxiety attacks, nervous all the time. Pity parties. You don't know why this is happening to you. Why is this? It happens to the best of us. But while we're waiting for God, through the process of waiting for God, God speaks to us. We get the answers. We are okay. That wait, woo, it feels like you've been naked. Acknowledging God is the only way to do it, though. Acknowledging his love for you. Acknowledging, I don't care what you think. That first moment, first I meet this random guy, he is the shit feeling. That's what you're going to get. That's what you're going to get all the time when you deal with God. And it's going to be weird. Me and too, you're going to get that damn she never, she always talk. Damn, she exactly what I want feeling when you get to communicate with God. That's how you really, that's the joy. It feel like a whole brand new love. Somebody that ain't never going to leave. Somebody that's got your back. That's how it feel. Always remember it's going to be issues. Don't slip back into that knowing. That is a hurtful place to be. That demon that be holding on. Oh, man. You got to trust God. You got to depend on God. Rely on God. You really got to surrender to him. Like he is the one that's going to buy your coats and your shoes. Just like you knew when your mama got up and went to work that your lights was going to get cut off. You didn't know your lights were going to get cut off. It's that dependency. Yo, your mama went to work to make sure y'all got water food. You know you gonna have food in the fridge because your mama went to work. Them kids. Have that kind of dependency on God. I know when I get this money, I'm about to do this. This pay my phone bill. That kind of energy and trust. That's what God wants you to give him. The type of frustrations, the wrong in you, the wrong in other people that bring out their attitudes, the triggering for your frustration, the frustration God sends to change, you know? And the only way to acknowledge this frustration and get over all of the frustration is to acknowledge the love that God has for you and to trust him and continue on with the journey. Continue on with the journey. Continue to read, continue to understand the differences between his people and him. What the plan is and what the plan is not. The difference is between the world and him. Because he's not of the world. Man, law isn't always right. It's some men within that unrighteous law that are correct in God. But they're there to let you know that, hey, this might not be right. But I'm here through God to help you get through this. It's people like that. But you have to understand that 
we are create we are created by God and our body has warnings and it has things that go off in us and tell us, hey, it's time to pay attention. It's time to do this. And a lot of y'all just ignore it and go on with life. Y'all hood rats. Y'all y'all uh loose and flimsy and y'all undereducated. It's not a cheap thing, you know, to talk about people that have bad credit and all of that stuff. But I mean you look at certain things in life, you know, you could tell people where God orchestrates certain people's lives. And if you don't know the true meaning of being here and dealing with this stuff and having an organized brain, then you lost. It's a lot more to deal with out here, but you can't enjoy the boats and the waters and the oceans and the people if you still got intuitive thoughts, ruminate, ruminating thoughts, your cognitive behavior, your thought process is all messed up. You know what I'm saying? The muscles in your... Uh, your uh, restoration uh, compart components in your body and your compartments in your brain is all wore off. It's time to start waking up, and I'll be waking up. I feel bad because I didn't understand some of these things before. I would argue with people or curse and yell at them. I pray they forgive me, everybody, I, and I forgive y'all, but it's time to start like. We can heal ourselves. We are healers. Come on, I'll bit my nails off. They grow back. I cut my hair off. They grow back. We heal ourselves. Frustration is deep down, inward root of our orienting. From when we were younger, things we believed, things people showed us, our agitations with people, things we didn't like that people did. But come on, we got to open our minds and our brains. We have to go to God. Because if we are opposite from negativity, there is obvious that it's negative. Good people got people that want to kill for them every day. It's good people. It's people that die for righteous people. Be righteous. Because you don't have to die for yourself. People die for it. And that's and that's not nothing to be like, oh, I have human sacrifices. People love good shit. Don't think that people like bad. People, you know, deal with bad shit. Oh, you remember that they deal with bad shit. People don't want to live with it. Talk that shit all they want to. They have to live with it. They don't want to. So become the person that is living with it. And you don't, you don't, you, you, you have to live with it, but you can deal with it righteous. That you can cope with these things. You feel what I'm saying? Get your mind right. No one's mentally ill. You're mentally unorganized. You're emotionally dysfunctional. You have some things in your brain that you wear out a little bit more than others. You know some things that you don't know. You know some things that you don't know. You know some things that you don't know. And so you have to look into yourself, but you have to remember that God, you are a child of God. He made you. It's always going to be that feeling that he's calling you. Learn to pray. Learn to sit down. You have to acknowledge him. I acknowledge his love for me all the time. That's why I got to put my clothes on and stuff. Why am I sitting around? You made my feet. You made my hands. You made my face. You made my body. Just because somebody in this world that you created and put in a womb, just like somebody said, they don't like it. But it's 100,000 people that was made into somebody else's womb that do it. I have a partner. I have somebody that look up to me and look down at me and look, hey, I like that. So it is what it is. So with all due respect, man, get it right. Frustration is one thing to deal with. God is calling. Cleanse yourself. Stop thinking what your mama and them thought was right. Some shit that they thought and your aunties and cousins them did, that wasn't right. It was wrong. But ask God for the guidance to know right. Start putting yourself in situations you ain't used to. Get around people that you normally wouldn't be around. Listen to conversations. Talk about different stuff. Become energetic. It'll make it a beautiful journey. So with all due respect, thank y'all for listening and hopping on here. Um, I pray y'all have a wonderful week. You know, I'm on here every day. Listen to these lives. They're very beautiful. I love my lives. I'll be, I be speaking truth to myself all the time. So make sure y'all take care of yourself. I love you all and have a beautiful morning.